G'day everybody and welcome back to the winery. So today I'm re-kitting all the filling valves on this filler. They have a number of seals and O-rings and, and glide rings etc in there and it's simply a matter of disassembling it and replacing them all. And we'll have a look at that but I thought it might be worth running through exactly what a bottle automatic bottle filler does and how it actually works. Here we go. So this is a guy machine, G-A-I, stop snickering, and uh, it's okay. You gotta remember I come from the beer industry and everything there is just volume, volume, volume. We're talking um, can fillers that operate somewhere in the vicinity of 2,000 cans per minute and bottle fillers that run on average, they run about a thousand bottles a minute, some a little faster, some a little slower. This thing here, we talk in hundreds of bottles per hour. <laughs> it's not very fast. But the bottleneck on this line is actually the packing end. We hand pack everything. We don't have an automatic bottle packer. So the guys can't keep up if, if you've got you know, fillers that are going a bit too quick. So this thing is perfectly adequate for what we do and the processes and the volumes that we run. Um, and in fact, it's a good little filler. It is what we classify a low vacuum filler. So it has a bowl here. This is the bowl and the bowl contains the, the liquid wine. And on top of this, is a, 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 an air gap, a space, and that's that air is under vacuum. So there's a connection at the top that runs down to a vacuum pump that's in underneath the machine. So you have a, a lower pressure in the bowl than atmosphere. And essentially all bottle fillers work on pressure differential. This one works on negative pressure differential other bottle fillers work on pure gravity and others work on um, counter pressure. So the bowl is a higher pressure than, than the atmosphere. And that is a requirement if you're running carbonated products. So beer and soft drinks and ciders, etc. cetera. Um, sparkling wine, anything with bubbles in it, you need, and if you're trying to put it in a bottle, you need to do it under pressure. And the reasons for that is that you need to maintain CO2 solubility. You need to have the right absorption rate. And the way you, you maintain your uh, CO2 solu solu solubility, <laughs> spit it out Andy, is you put it under pressure. So we do have another filler here and it is designed just for that purpose because we used to do a lot of cider volume here. We no longer do, we've gotten away from cider because it's not core business, we want to focus on our wines. We do do some commercial sparklings that require a counter pressure filler. Most of our sparklings are method traditional and are bottled and are fermented in bottles, so we don't need to run them through a counter pressure filler. I'm getting a little bit deep and a little bit ahead of myself here. Uh, I don't want to make this too complicated. But let's just say for now, we have a low vacuum filler. And uh, we'll have a quick look at how that works. We'll pull one of the valves out, strip it all apart, and then replace all the bits and pieces and you can see the working components. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see here, the, these plates um, are rising. They're on a cam. They've got a pull down roller here and as it runs over the cam, the cam, the cam is stationary, of course, and as this drives past the cam, it pulls the roller down, and that allows the, um, the bottle plate to be at the right height to transfer the bottle onto and off of. So the bottle comes in over there, and then it raises. And as it raises, it presses up against this guy here. And there's a couple of seals here 
one up under there that seals on the neck of the bottle and another one up under here that seals at the top of this. So you can imagine the bottle is compressed between this spring and these seals and, and then it pushes this up. And what that does is it opens the valving. One of the great advantages of low vacuum fillers, well, for still wine and spirit alcohols like bourbons and whiskies and that sort of thing, these fillers are perfect. They're very good at keeping your dissolved oxygen levels low. And they are low on complexity. The counter pressure fillers are high on complexity. This valve has a very simple operation. It lifts up against the spring and that opens all the internal valving. That's it. And I'll explain a bit more about what, the f what functions take place when that happens, when we get this thing apart. This is a counter pressure filler. This is our, our Bertolasso counter pressure filler and it's high in complexity. So this is the one that has the, the bowl full of carbon dioxide or nitrogen, whatever gas you're, you're using and, um, and product. And it is at a higher pressure. We've got a number of these poppet valves here that do perform tasks like pre-evacuation, um, auto leveling, snifting to bring the bottle back to atmospheric pressure, etc. Um, they they are far more complex than the uh, simplicity of a counter pressure filler. Okay, so I'll pull this valve out now and we'll take it back to the workshop and pull it apart and I'll show you the internal functions. There's nowhere really to prop this phone, so I've, I've already removed one of these cap screws. I'm just trying to get the second one out. I don't want to it's all going to crash into the ground, but it shouldn't do. It'll just land on this little thing there. That's it. So this is the bottle seal. And for the purpose of this exercise, we don't need it. So I'll just pop these two nuts off. This will probably hang there because they, they tend to stick up. If you haven't um, had them apart recently. I'll just give it a little shake. And out it comes. Okay, back to the workshop. Okay, back in the workshop. Look at what I picked up. Look at this. This is lovely, this little thing. Made in Australia. I'm tipping probably 1950s. It was originally flat belt driven. Um, it still uses the flat belt to drive the spindle. Um, but V-belt drive there off, off the electric motor. But it is a really nice, very solid little unit. It doesn't have a uh, universal head or anything, it's just a straight spindle, but the way you deal with that is fixturing, so you get angle plates, etc. But anyway, that's, um, that's, a, that's just something I thought I'd uh, give you a look at while I'm here. And I also, also bought this. This is also, this is 1960s and it was made in Australia. And um, it is a three phase, two speed, grinder and it actually came out of the cascade brewery which was near and dear to my heart i couldn't say no to it i know it's the late 60s because in 1967 that brewery burnt to the ground in a bushfire and the workshop was re-kitted straight after that so it was like 1968 1969 at the, at the most um, when all this stuff went in it is all solid cast iron and it weighs a bloody ton 
Uh, I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to configure this tiny little workshop to fit all this stuff in. And it needs a coat of paint and you know a bit of a tidy up. My plan was to remove the oxide wheels and put a, um, a buffing wheel and a scotch bright wheel and run it on the low speed. Um, but anyway, we'll see what, I'll do something with it, that's for sure. I don't, I don't want to let go of it, I love it. Right, back to the task at hand. So here we have all of our, our seals. Um, and these are the old ones that I've been pulling out of the valves as I go. Um, I'll start by just removing, this, this is used, it, it's engaged in a, um, in a spur gear that runs through the center of the machine. And you rotate that to wind these and that adjusts your fill height up and down uh, on the on the bottle so if it's if you're you, you, they do volume checks and if they're under volume by milliliters or whatever they'll they'll move it and um, put a little bit more wine in or if they're over volume they'll move it and put a little less wine in till they get the right amount it's fairly it's fairly um, the Australian government are pretty hot on that. They want they want you to be putting the volume out that you're advertising and uh, they're collecting revenue on. All right, so I'm gonna unscrew that and then we'll go from there. Then you can just squeeze these together. There's a spring in there and that's the action that happens when you get a bottle um, compressed. And you can see that valve, that part there opens up. And also this end opens up. Right, so that's now open and that's now open. So if you can imagine when this is sitting in the, in the machine, the wine level might be say here. So above that is is air under vacuum below that is wine liquid the liquid runs down in through here and enters the bottle on the outside of this this little valve here however it doesn't just run down because it's it's being held up by uh, a differential pressure so we have atmospheric pressure down here and we have a lower than atmospheric pressure here. So the wine stays in suspension until we can equalise the pressure inside the bottle. And that is done by this, this is the gas valve here. So this lifts, it's in a conical seat. It's got two O-rings and it lifts, when it lifts off the vacuum, the air is drawn out of the bottle via, via the inside of this valve up through there goes right up through the centre of it, out into here, and the bottle eventually becomes the same pressure as the pressure inside the head above the wine. So it becomes less than atmospheric. I hope that makes sense. Then, once then, and only then, the wine can trickle down. The wine will fall because it weighs something. It has a mass, so it has gravity trying to pull it down. As long as our vacuum is uh, overcoming that, the wine will stay in suspension. But once we get a, an equal pressure in the bottle, vacuum is all, uh, sorry, gravity is all that is required and the wine flows down, sprays out onto the walls of the glass, runs to the bottom of the bottle and fills from the bottom up until it reaches uh, the top and it cuts off the, um, the vacuum and liquid and it can't go anywhere it just sits there and then as it it lowers it down off the that plate then lowers and the bottle disengages from the from the valve and the valve shuts again uh, preventing any any wine leakage and then the bottle exits the machine and goes in and gets a cork put in it or a screw top or whatever closure is going on there so let's pull this thing apart God, i hope this is making sense so I just put a little torx bit into the hole inside the gas port and grab the knurled nut on the end 
and unscrew it. Because we've relaxed it because we've clamped it together and that just relaxed that whole assembly. It's not under spring tension. There is a small spring in the back. And then we just extract that valve. Then we can uh, let this thing go. There's our spring and some seals. Right, one of the first bits that I, um, one of the first things I do, there's a, an O-ring in here and I replace that. Just uh, bear with me while I put this in the vise. There's assembly grease in there, and it's still in there because there's an O-ring that protects it, pre prevents the product from leaking past it uh, and running down these threads. This might prove to be difficult, two-handed, uh, sorry, single-handed. Yeah, hang on. You get the picture. Oh, I don't know how to bloody will do this, how to film it. Okay, so essentially we've got an O-ring in there that I've already removed. Our gas valve has three O-rings. It has one at the top of the shaft that this screws into. And it has these two here. And you can see it's ported between those O-rings. So the gas travels, or air, at um, a mild negative pressure, travels up, up through the center of this and out through there. So once it's lifted off its tapered seat, which is here, the vacuum the low pressure is allowed to equalize in the bottle. And then the liquid runs through here, down the center here, on the outside of this guy, and deflects to the side of the bottle off this um, taper here. Make sense? I'm gonna pull all of the seals off this, wash my hands, get a clean cloth, and um, I'll be back to reassemble it. Okay, before I start my washing up, uh, I just thought I'd show you, these are all of the seals that are associated with this component and this component. Um, the two O-rings there come from here and this O-ring is an O-ring backup. So this O-ring goes onto this groove and supports this seal. So this seal has um, a little groove in the back of it that engages with that O-ring. It sits inside of it. Uh, oh, you, you, know, you know what I mean. Sits inside of it. This is just, these are just wear bands. So they, they sit, one sits here. So there's a wear band plus the O-ring, uh, sorry, plus the seal and O-ring back up in that groove. And then there's another wear band here and they provide um, a bearing surface between this and the, um, the stainless steel here. This is the main body seal that resides there and that's what seals up against the filler bowl. I have all of the seals I need here. I ordered all the seals I needed. In fact, I ordered enough to do this twice. Bar one, I missed it. It's this little fella here, this little O-ring here. And he's important. He's important as all of the others. But thankfully, they've all been malleable and in, in good nick, so uh, I've just been reusing them. It was an oversight by me. I, um, they don't have... These are all the seals you need to overhaul your valve. <laughs> they just have a drawing of the valve with a thousand flame and bits and pieces pointing with part numbers on them and um, no descriptions and if you could read it anyway, if you could read Italian you'd be alright but I can't so 
uh, yeah, I had to go by what I had. But I just have to pop this seal off now and uh, then I can do my washing up. Okay, this might work and the foam might not fall over. <laughs> so what we have is uh, everything all ready to go. These are all my new seals, everything's clean. And I use a um, food grade grease. Um, it's a kluber, is there anyone who's interested? I love kluber greases um, in terms of food grade. O-ring, and I'm working left-handed now because I've got the phone on the wrong side, haven't I? Oh, well. we'll manage. This is our seal. And I usually have to work the O-ring under it with my thumbnails. Which I've just done. So that's really the only seal on this main body part other than um, the, the, go, the liquid seal and the gas seal at the other end. The rest of these are just glide rings, as I said. Uh, they're a Teflon or nylon combination of some type. Now this thing is going to have grease in it in the working areas, but fear not because I mean hygiene is super important in, uh, in, in food industry, period. However, um, fear not because they will be doing a, completing a CIP on this machine. CIP stands for clean in place. So they'll essentially wash this thing out with hot caustic and then they will um, rinse it and clean it within an inch of its life. So anywhere, I mean, I use the grease to help me assemble so we don't damage things and we don't, you know, and things like seals and O-rings go on into their positions. Um, and so there is grease in the food contact areas, but one, it is food grade, and two, they're gonna clean it. So that grease will be washed away. And it'll only be residual grease in areas that are not food contact, such as that. Okay, spring goes on here. This guy, oh, actually, we'll put, there is one that I haven't replaced yet. You feel it just you feel it just touch down on that o-ring and then um, I just compress the o-ring and nip it up. I'll just pop that in the vise and do that. Done. Then we can slide these two together. Pop him in the vise. Okay, so I, I press that up in the vise and now I can just pop my liquid valve, liquid slash gas valve in. And uh, screw this end on. 
I'm going to put the phone down again. Right, this this seal here fits into the end of that guy. Right, guy. Give him a bit of lube. And it's all together, we just have uh, this one seal to go. He goes on there. And that is now ready, put back into the filler. Here we go. And there we go, he's back in, ready to go, ready to race, ready to run another day. That's the uh, spur gear I was talking about that gets rotated and that winds these guys up and down and that adjusts the height of the, the, the wine volume in the bowl, in the bottle, I apologise. There we go. Well, I, hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. Catch you later. Bye for now.